So we learned about recursive neural networks. We learned about convolutional neural networks. There is this other idea that may be the same way that you had word representations. You can have representations for sentences and documents. Once you have a representation, you're representing it with a vector. And once you have a vector, you can use that for classification tasks. Uh, so what are the weaknesses? The first idea that would come to your mind is bag of words. Even if you don't know about recursive neural networks and conv or convolutional neural networks, the first idea that comes to mind and the first thing that we are going to try is to represent each sentence like distributed representations of sentences and documents. This is a sentence by a bag of words. So you count the number of times that distributed appeared in this sentence, representations appeared in your sentence, etc. So you go through your vocabulary one after another and count the number of times that that particular vocabulary is appearing in your sentence. And that's gonna give you a bag of words. Most of the times it's gonna be a zero vector zero entry in your vector. So it's going to be very sparse. And there are going to be a bunch of them that are non-zero and are appearing more than one. Maybe your maybe of is showing multiple times in your sentence. So that's a bag of word. But what are its weaknesses? Can you think about a couple of weaknesses of this approach? Um, it ignores word order. OK, that's one. You're going to lose ordering of your words. Perfect. Can you think of another one? I mean, I just, I can think of like a bunch of consequences of losing word ordering, like negation or double negation or triple negation. You won't know if like the word no shows up multiple times. Okay. These are consequences of the first item. I'm looking for a second item that might be a little bit more complicated to guess, but why did we do word representations? What was the intuition behind it? That certain words had sort of similarity to other words. Exactly. So that's why we did that. This type of an approach is going to ignore semantics of your words. It's going to ignore the meaning. For instance, we know that powerful should be closer to strong compared to powerful being closer to Paris in terms of meaning. So these two have very different meanings compared to powerful and strong. Okay. So these two words should be closer to each other. So if you treat your document as a bag of words, you're going to miss that you're gonna miss the semantics. That's why we did word representations. So I'm gonna go over word representations again because it's a very important topic. And then we are gonna expand on that. For word representations, you had a word matrix. So this is basically your vocabulary. The rows are your words, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. And uh, the columns are the representations of your words. And then you had a corpus of size T. Then for continuous bag of words, let's consider continuous bag of words. We, is, we also learned about the skip gram model for continuous bag of words. You would take as input your context of size K. So previously we were calling it C, now let's call it K. This is your context size. Given those, you wanted to predict the word in the middle. And then we said we are gonna model that using softmax. And then for Y, we are gonna say, we're gonna take a look at the words, these are our words in the context. We can read them off from the word matrix. So this is your vocabulary. Each one of these is an index, okay? Wt minus k and Wt plus k. They're indices. So once you know the indices, you can go and read off the correct rows from your word matrix. Once you have the correct rows, you can either concatenate them or average them out. So you just sum them up and divide them by the number of times that they are appearing. So it's going to be you're dividing by 2k minus 1 in this case, if you're averaging. And now that you have a vector, you can multiply it by a matrix to correct the size because you have that many classes in the end. So you want to correct the size. And then you can, add a you can add a bias or you can ignore it. So previously, we were ignoring this bias term. We can actually include it. Now that you have y, it's a vector of the same size as the number of vocabularies as the size of your vocabulary. Now we can do a soft max on it to turn those numbers into probabilities. So this is what we learned about it in the first slide or in the second slide of this course. And then we said that's costly. Let's use hierarchical soft max and Hoffman encoding. And we said even that one is costly. 
let's say, let's rephrase that and rephrase that using negative sampling. So some cases are positive, they are showing in the context. Some cases are negative, they are not showing in your context. Uh, and then your model should be able to distinguish between the two, the positive cases versus the negative cases. So you can play around with your loss function to make it more efficient. Once you do that, that's your model. You have, for instance, the cat, the cat sat on the mat, for instance. So the cat sat uh, there is a row in your W matrix. So you just read it off, you copy it here, you either concatenate your average and then you can do your classification. What is the next word? Or what is the word in the middle? This is how we represented words. You can extend this idea. You can have a vector for each paragraph. For instance, a vector for each review on an Amazon product. You can have a paragraph vector the same way that you had word vectors in your W. How do you do it? You go through your corpus and let's say you have a million paragraphs in your data set. For each one, you're gonna have a vector. The same way that you were putting your word vectors in the rows of these W, you're gonna put, put your paragraph vectors in the rows of this D matrix. Now a paragraph goes in, you read off the corresponding vector, you copy it here, and then the idea is that the same way that you were concatenating and averaging the word vectors, just average these out. You average them out and then you, you're gonna predict the next word or the word in the middle. So that's the idea. How do you train it? You're gonna write a loss function. So this method is gonna be called distributed memory. DM is gonna stand for distributed memory and PV is for paragraph vector. So PVDM is your distributed memory method. So this is just the name of the method. What is your loss function? Your loss function is gonna look like this, what you had here. And what are you gonna optimize this loss function with respect to? So you're gonna maximize this with respect to the bias. So this term here, with respect to you, with respect to your words, and with respect to the paragraph vectors. So with respect to D. This is training. Once the training is done, you have to do inference. So somebody is gonna give you a new paragraph. So there is a catch here. There is a problem with this method. The problem is for each new paragraph that somebody is gonna give, give it to you, you're gonna have to a little bit of training. So it's gonna slow down inference. So that's a drawback of this method. You're gonna have a D test. So you need to first come up with these values. So a little bit of training is gonna go on there for each new paragraph that you see in your test data. But once you know D, the rest of it is very easy. You're gonna do a logistic regression or support vector machine on D and do your classification. Once you have a vector, everything is back to classical machine learning. Okay, that's why you're, gonna, you're going through all of this trouble to transform your text into a vector. And then once you have a vector, the, next, the rest of it is game over. You can do a simple logistic regression and you're done. This is distributed memory paragraph words. You can have a similar idea to skip gram. A paragraph goes in, you're gonna sample a bunch of words from it. And then your task is given this paragraph, can you predict what words are in, par are, are, are in this paragraph? I give you a paragraph, what are the words in this paragraph? So you just sample four words and the task of your training process is to solve this problem. If I give you the paragraph ID, what words were in there? So this method, this one here, is a little bit more efficient in terms of parameters compared to the previous one. Can somebody tell me why? Well, you're just learning a single matrix here instead of four. Uh, you're still learning. You're still learning D. There is going to be a W here. Mm. There is going to be a U. There is going to be a B during training. But yes, you're right. During inference, you don't need to carry with you W, U, and B anymore. So you just need to learn these Ds, and then that's game over. So it's a little bit more efficient, parameterized-wise. But let's take a look at its performance. This one is going to be called PV, paragraph vector, D, B, O, W, and distribute. it's going to be distributed bag of words. You can test it on Stanford Sentiment Bank. For a Stanford Sentiment Bank, you have two types of tasks, positive versus negative, or 
distrib or uh, predicting the category between five classes. Good, very good, uh, neutral, etc. Very bad and bad. And then if you compare it to naive base, support vector machines, bigram naive base, word vector averaging. So a simple solution is just average the word vectors. Recursive neural networks is what we covered last session. And recursive neural tensor network is exactly what we covered last session. And then this simple method is doing better than the rest of them. But then there is a catch. So these ones are going to be really fast when it comes to uh, inference. This one has a little bit to do. So you need to do some optimization for this d-test. You can do IMDB. So this method is doing the best using power of vectors compared to neural network uh, type and classical machine learning type methods. And then you can do information retrieval. Information retrieval is like search. So you're searching for something in your documents, in your data set. It's what we do all the time with Google searches that we do. That's information retrieval. And then this is doing the best on information retrieval. Any questions? So we saw a couple of methods so far. So, and all of them have this in common. A sentence goes in, and in the end, you want to end up with a vector. You want to turn your sentences into vectors for classification. The first one had a tree structure, and then you were merging words, uh, pairs of words together from one layer of your tree to the next layer. The second one was a convolutional operation, and this is another one, and each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. For instance, this one is going to be slow for inference because you have to do some optimization. The convolution we saw, an example, so it matters how many convolutional layers you're going to use. And this was exactly the point that you were making. What if the length of the sequence is too big? Are you going to lose performance or no? And the first method has this drawback that you needed to have a tree parser. So you need to do some pre-processing on your data. Any questions about this? Is everything clear? I have a question about the um, paragraph vector. I feel like a paragraph can be very, very large. So I'm wondering how much information can you really hold in a vector that is actually the same size as just vector for words? Actually, if this method works, and if you're happy to willing this price of optimizing for d-test, for me, this is the most flexible way of doing it. Why? Because you're going to have uh, the size of D, at least the number of rows that you're going to have, is going to grow with the size of your data. So you're going to have a lot of parameters here. And the more parameters you have, the more flexible your method is going to be. So in terms of capacity, I'm not worried about this method. It has a lot of capacity. The thing that worries me is this optimization during inference. Because in inference, we want things to be fast. That's the whole point of doing deep learning. Training, you can take as much time as you want. For inference, you need to be fast. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so you're saying that um, the length of D can vary. It doesn't have to be the same length as the, um, for example, D, cat, sat, those three vectors? That's one thing. So the size of your paragraph vector could be very large. But then you can have many paragraph vectors for each uh, paragraph in your data set, you're going to have a vector. So this is really flexible. For each data point, you have a parameter. Because now your data points are those sentences that you have, or your paragraphs. So that's going to be a lot of parameters. And yes, these other matrices, Ws, are fixed. These are your vocabulary. These are You can actually learn them, but then during inference, they are fixed. Given W, U, and B, you're going to learn d-test. So is everything clear now? Okay, perfect. Any other questions?